In this video, we'll talk even more about expectation. We'll talk about linearity of expectation and the law of the unconscious statistician. So let's say you and your friend sell fish for a living. On every day you catch X fish and the average number being three. Every day your friend catches Y fish with the average number being seven. So how many fish do the two of you uh, expect to bring in on an average day? So that's Z be X plus Y, which is the total number of fish. Well, you might just say it's three plus seven, which is 10. And you would be correct. And um, because the expected value of X plus Y, it turns out we can actually say it's the expected value of X plus the expected value of Y. Furthermore, let's say you can sell your fish for $5 at a store, but you need to pay $20 in rent. How much profit do you expect to make? Well, the profit you expect to make is five times the number of fish minus 20. That's the profit. And then you take the expected value. And it turns out you can actually just do five times 10 minus 20 um, because expectation also happens to work nicely with linear functions. So linearity of expectation says if X and Y are random variables on the same sample space omega, then the expected value of the sum is the sum of the expected values. And also linear transformations of a random variable are um, work nicely as well. So let's prove it. So let's say, let's look at the expected value of X plus expected value of Y. By definition, remember, it was the sum of the outcomes in omega of X applied to that outcome times the probability of the outcome. This is one of the two definitions of expectation. And then um, what you can do is you can group the X and Y of omega together. And then this actually just is defined to be X plus Y of omega. And this is kind of like F plus G of X, and this is F of X plus G of X. And that's just the definition of uh, the addition of functions. And this, by definition, is the expected value of x plus y, as it's x plus y, the function applied to omega, times the probability of omega. So now let's apply linearity. So a frog starts on a 1D number line at 0. At each time step, it moves left with probability PL, right with probability PR, and stays with probability PS, where they add up to 1. Let x be the position of the frog after two time steps. What is the expected value of x? So by brute force, the range of x is negative 2 to 2. So that's the possible places the frog can end up. Um, and now let's try to find the probability mass function. So the probability we end up at negative 2 is PL squared because the steps are independent and the only way to get to negative 2 is to go left twice. Similarly, for k equals 2, you have to go right twice. Um, for k equals negative 1, we either go left and stay or stay and left. So we add them up and we get 2 times this. Same for k equals 1. And then k equals 0 is similar. You either go left, right, right, left, or stay, stay. So the expected value of x uh, is the the, val each, the sum of each value times this probability, so negative 2 times PL squared plus negative 1 times this, and so on, and you turn out to get this number here. So now let's uh, try it with linearity instead. So let x1 and x2 be the distance the frog travels at time steps 1 and 2, respectively. Um, an important observation to see is that x is actually the sum of x1 plus x2, because your location after two time steps is the sum of the displacement on the first plus the second time step. And so the uh, range of these displacements is negative 1, 0, 1 and the probabilities are just PL, PS, and PR. And so the expected value of one time step displacement is just negative one times PL plus zero PS plus PR, and you just get PR minus PL, which kind of makes sense. And then by linearity of expectation, since X is defined to be X1 plus X2, this middle step here is where we split the expected value of the sum into the sum of the expected values, and you get two times PR minus PL. So which method was easier? So in this case, it might be debatable, but if we change the number of time steps to 100 or 1,000, the first method would be completely infeasible, but the second feasible, uh, the second method would be the same because you would just get like 1,000 times PR minus PL. Now we'll talk about another property of expectation. Um, let x be the number of heads in two independent flips of a fair coin. Recall the range was 0, 1, and 2, and this is the probability mass function, and the expected value was 1. Let y equals x cubed. What does this even mean? Well, literally it means the cubed number of heads. So the range of y is just 0, 1, or 8 because you either have 0, 1, or 8 cubed heads. And the probability mass function of y is zero, uh, 1 fourth on 0, 1 half on 1, and 1 fourth on 8. And because you can only have uh, 8 with probability 1 fourth when it's heads heads. And then the expected value you can compute normally and you get 2.5. So is there an easier way to compute the expected value of x cubed without going through the trouble of writing out the probability mass function of y? And if you stare at this formula, these two formulas long enough, you'll see that if I rewrite this formula to be 0 cubed, 1 cubed, and 2 cubed, um, you'll see that the expected value of x cubed was actually the sum of the values of the range of x of that value cubed times the probability of that value. And so in general, if you want the expected value of a function of x, you can just apply that function um, before you're multiplying by the probabilities. Notice that the expected value of x cubed is 2.5, but the expected value of x quantity cubed is 1 cubed, which is 1. So the expected value of x cubed is not equal to the expected value of x quantity cubed. And that's the law of the unconscious statistician.